300 bits per second. This is number 1000 off the line, by the way. This is a modem from the 80s. This was made in Korea, but it's from General Electric. And you would actually plop the phone down here on the top. This is 100 billion bits per second. 100 billion <laughs> versus 300. My, we've come a ways, haven't we? This is the Mellanox Connect X5. This is our tie-in transport. There's four Epic nodes in this thing. The tie-in chassis this came from can rock up to 512 Epic threads and two terabytes of memory. And it's time we talk network interfaces for clusters. <laughs> See, these blades have two PCI Express slots, which is awesome. I can throw in a 100 gigabit card like this one. This is actually potentially up to a dual gigabit card, but this type of connector is QSFP, and this is a QSFP to fiber interface. So this will take that quad interface and turn it into, you know, a single transmit receive fiber pair and operate at 100 gigabits. Um, you don't even necessarily have to use a fiber transceiver like this or loopback cables that'll work over short distances, but it's not Ethernet. It's not Ethernet at all. These chassis actually have another OCP2 slot underneath the standard PCI Express slots where you can install a module like this one. This one is a very nice Intel X550 AT2. It's two 10 gigabit interfaces. 10 gigabit for a server like this is basically okay. So you're running your server workload, it's self-contained, We've got, you know, we've got four, four terabyte U.2 drives. These are available in up to 16 terabyte capacities. It's four NVMe interfaces on the front. We're doing pretty good with our PCI Express lanes, even though the platform has 128 PCI Express lanes. I've also got an Optane M.2 cache right here, and my operating system M.2 is back here. So we got the dual M.2 slots plus U.2. Plus there's also four SATA connections. So if you'd rather run four SATA drives up here, you could, or you could probably use a proprietary breakout cable and run some SATA disk on module stuff if you really, really wanted to, but I don't know that that's a supported configuration from Tyann. But you do have the SATA interface as well as the NVMe, so you could rock SATA up front if you really had to. This platform is amazing and flexible and awesome, and it's really, it's really pretty cool. This is a self-contained server. There's so four servers in a 2U chassis, that's really awesome. 10 gigabit interface, that's really awesome. You know, if you're running virtual machines and all your storage is here, and your VMs hit the network at 10 gigabit, that's pretty good. You're running VMware or something like that. It's self-contained, that's fine. When you run into problems is when you run a cluster, you deploy a cluster. So if we're talking about VMware and vSAN, and this is universally true of any vSAN cluster, not just you know running in a single chassis, you really want the interface between nodes to be as fast as possible. And 25 gigabit is really not expensive anymore. I know the big OEMs really want you to think that it's expensive, but Mellanox Connect X4 and Connect X5 cards like this one are under $500. Typically you can pick these up now for, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars, which is not an unreasonable price. Okay, okay, what about the Switch? Yeah, you can get the cards cheap, but what about the Switch? Well, Dell has the S5212F-ON. See, there's a secret in the Switch market. The bottom is basically falling out of it. The hyperscalers are buying Switches in such capacity, and they've gotten to be such sophisticated buyers, that everybody that is buying, when, when this was considered high speed, is so sophisticated, they're dictating how the switch is to be built. And so there's not really a lot of differentiating features anymore, unless you're like Cisco or Juniper or one of those. But when you're Facebook and Amazon and Google, and you're specifying a 100 gigabit switch, there's this open network initiative. Uh, and when you buy switches like the Dell S5212F-ON, uh, it's a, what's called an Oni switch. O-N-I-E, and you run a custom operating system on it depending on what solution you're deploying it as. And so the differentiator actually becomes software. Now the software that Dell will sell you is actually based on Debian, and you have to log into Dell's license portal to get it. But it's also kind of open, so it's kind of hard to stop it from just leaking on the internet. So, but you're not supposed to run that because it requires a license. And there's also a subscription and versus not a subscription. But the reality is, is that like between Open Compute and Oni and all of the other stuff, and what happened with Arista, remember a couple of years ago, we bought that Arista, you know, 10 slash 40 gigabit switch for a bunch of nothing. And it's like, hey, this is based on x86. 
The x86 hardware in there, or the UEFI hardware in the case of the Dell, is just control plane stuff. There's still special silicon in there that actually does the switching. It's just that the control panel for flipping all the knobs and tunables gives you a familiar interface on Linux. The CPU in those, the x86 CPU in those switches, is not doing the heavy lifting. It's the custom silicon that's doing the heavy lifting, but you as the operator get to decide which ports go where, what VLANs, what interface speeds, so on and so forth. And in order to flip those knobs and tunables, you need some kind of a convenient interface to do that. Well, nobody wants to ride an operating system, ergo. Linux becomes the de facto choice for the, the operating system of the control plane of those switches. So in the case of the Dell S5212-F-ON, Debian. And there's a how-to guide for getting it up and running, assuming that you get the uh, software from your Dell license portal on the level one forum. That is 12 SFP28 interfaces, just like our ConnectX 4 card that I've installed in this uh, tie-in blade, as well as three 100 gig interfaces, which are similar to the 100 gig interface on our Mellanox card here. And this is a switch that can switch at wire speed. So we've got 300 gig ports and 12 28 gig ports. Now actually under the hood, what Dell has done to make this switch relatively affordable, street price is about 1200. It'll fluctuate a little bit because of this video because a bunch of you will run out and buy this because hey, it's a good learning platform. Full disclosure, uh, it's actually a bunch of 100 gig interfaces that are pre-broken out into uh, SFP28 interfaces. You see, this interface in this form is four channels. It's four 25 gig channels. There's a total of 100 gigabit here. The next step up in networking is 400 gigabit. Can you guess what they did with 400 gig? Yeah, four channels that are 100 gigabit instead of four channels. That it, we're not here to talk about that. That stuff is still a little bit unobtainium because the hyperscalers are buying all of that for crazy inflated prices. But what we can buy is stuff like this. And nobody ever got fired for buying Mellanox. And uh, that's probably why the whole NVIDIA thing. They're really, really good cards. Connect X3, Connect X4, Connect X5 are still very viable. Um, even though I think this, this card is from, I think, 2019. Oh, it's like, oh, it's three years old. It's totally obsolete. It's 100 gigabits. It's 100 gigabits with low overhead. But it's not just that it's 100 gigabits. It's also that it can actually offload a lot of processing and computation of things like RDMA. So this is why it's very important to pair that with another switch like the S5212 on. Now, because those are basically built or you know, built a hyperscaler spec, they don't do everything, they don't solve every use case. You see, when Dell sells you a switch, it has to sell you a switch that basically works even if you're an idiot. And the most dangerous kind of idiot are the idiots that don't know they're an idiot. They're at the top of Mount Stupid, and they really make everyone's life a living hell. A uh, short version of that is that when you build products around that, they have to work no matter what. The S5212 F-ON from Dell, if you were to plug in an SFP plus cable into the SFP 28 port, it will not work. In fact, out of the box, it doesn't do anything because there's no operating system. It's like, oh, is it broken? Ah. No, you just put the operating system on it. But even when you put the operating system on it, it doesn't work. Remember how I mentioned that it's actually three 100 gig ports and then 12 28 gig ports? Well, those 12 28 gig ports are in four port groups internally in terms of their wiring. So if you want to run an SFP 28 port, at 10 slash one gigabit, you can, but it goes in four port groups. Now, some of these seem to be actually be able to configure individual ports, and some of these S5212s seem to be able to only configure them in groups of four. I've got one that won't let me configure it for whatever reason, it may be my operating system version because I don't have the very latest. Uh, it won't let me configure uh, one, just one port to run at 10 slash one. I have to configure a group of four. And that makes sense because internally it's this 100 gig interface that they've just broken out into four SFP 28 ports. You can do that with the 100 gig ports too. So like the, the 300 gig ports that are physically, you know, this QSFP connection, you can get a cable that breaks that out into four SFP 28 cables and that's totally fine and that works and there's, there's no problem with that. And you can go in the, in the switch interface and tell it, hey, these are actually four interfaces, not just one. You can configure that to mix 10 gigabit and even one gigabit stuff with your 100 gig interface, but you really don't need to in something like this. You really, what you wanna do is set up your ConnectX uh, interface to run at 25 gig or 2X 25 gig, connect that to the Dell switch and have everything run at 25 gig on this side. And then maybe your storage server, like your all flash SAN or whatever is connected to two of those 100 gig interfaces and you're good to go. Now here's the other really awesome thing, 
about the S5212 F-12 ports plus three. You're supposed to have two of them. That's why it's half the, the width of one U. You're supposed to get two of these side by side and link them together with one or two hundred gig cables so that you've got a hundred gigs of switching capacity between the two sides. And then when you've got something like this with your dual SFP28 connection, one side goes to one switch, the other side goes to the other switch. The reason for that is if one switch fails completely, your cluster remains fully connected. So imagine four of these in our 2U blade uh, that are all connected with you know, uh, two SFP28 connections, so 25 gigs on each side. And then imagine another storage server that's connected at 2x 100 gig, because it's all flash, because we need to rock 10 gigabytes per second. I mean, 10 gigabytes per second is barely faster than a single Gen 4 NVMe, so, you know, that's how this should work, right? Then you have one 100 gig interface from your all-flash SAN going to one side, and another 100 gig interface going to the other side. And that's how everything works, and Connection is really good. Let's step back for a second and talk thought exercise, because as developers and people that are working on higher end local machines, let's say that you got a really awesome, you know, Threadripper workstation, you got really fast storage and all that. You've set up your solution locally, you've got your database running locally, everything is really good, you got that really nice Gen 4 SSD. Everything on your local workstation is gonna be insanely fast, because you got all the memory bandwidth, all the cores, and all the disk speed. When you deploy that solution to the cloud, it's going to be an order of magnitude slower, because the cloud computers just aren't that nice. Think about all of the stuff that we've talked about here. 25 gigabit is only 2.5 gigabytes per second interface speed from storage to your switch. And so when we're talking about something like vSAN, if the storage is local, yeah, I'm gonna be able to run local NVMe storage at local speeds, that's great. But if some of the storage for the VM that's running locally on this CPU and this memory need some stuff from over the wire, it's gonna be constrained to whatever speed uh, that it can get it from the other machine. 10 gig, 10 gig is not fast enough for vSAN anymore. If you're deploying a solution this year or even last year and you deployed your vSAN solution on 10 gig, I'm sorry, but you've, you've made a mistake because 25 gig would not have been that much more expensive and it's orders of magnitude faster, not just because of the bandwidth, but also the offload capability. And that's the other feature that these Mellanox uh, NICs have, remote DMA and uh, you know, handling packet flows and handling you know, local storage. The drivers for Linux, Windows, and VMware for these uh, network cards, the software part of it is extremely sophisticated. These cards will absolutely use their X16 interface and they really do take a lot of load off of the CPU when you deploy it in a solution like this. So we've got a video coming up with OpenShift. We're simulating a cluster on a single AMD EPIC server. It's based on the Gigabyte MZ72-HB0. This is a monstrous motherboard that supports 280 watt EPIC CPUs and my goodness, running Red Hat OpenShift on that thing is crazy. It can basically pretend to be three nodes of data center. We've maxed it out with uh, NVMe storage and a, a 100 gig Mellanox uh, interface. I just, the mind boggles at how fast OpenShift is and how efficiently it uses resources. The plan is to do some content around those kinds of clusters with systems like this. And I went to do that with our tie-in cluster and found out, yeah, 10 gig is my bottleneck. I'm gonna have to move up to 25 or even 100 gig. So I've got some 100 gig PCIe cards, as well as our dual 25 gig OCP2 cards, which is about the limit of what I'm gonna do on OCP2. I'm really excited about this. I love this tie-in chassis. I love the Gigabyte motherboard that we're rocking in our system. That's the Fractal Torrent case, which is one of the only desktop cases that give you enough airflow to satisfy a server motherboard. <laughs> Things are bananas. And also big thanks to AMD for letting me have all these CPUs because, oh my gosh, have you seen all the insanity? We've been just having a blast on the Level 1 forums. I'm Little, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Woo, Mellanox, 100 gigs! <laughs>